we've got several from our Dominican trip that's going to come forward and share for just a moment. So if you are one of those, will you come forward here, guys? Thank you. All right, let me have these. All right, our Dominican folks, here they come. Andrew, we've asked them just a, a couple of questions to share with you. And, and real briefly, the first question was really easy. It was, what did you see God do in the Dominican that you can share with us? So if you want to go ahead and, and kick us off, Kaylee. Oh, okay. okay. Um, so um, I just saw God, for the most part, really connect people. I mean, there was a language barrier. I didn't know any Spanish at all. And so I'm going to a country that is strictly Spanish. And so um, it was just cool to see God connect me with the locals um, on a deeper level with um, in the spirit and even though I don't know what they're trying to tell me and they don't know what I'm trying to tell them I mean there were interpreters but when there weren't we didn't know what we, each other were saying but we were confident that we loved each other and that we were there to help each other um, there was one moment in particular that we were on uh, doing home visits and <laughs> I'm sorry for my Dominican people because they've heard me tell me this, tell them this a, a thousand times. But um, one of the uh, the homes that we went, it was an older woman and she had eight children, I believe, and then four grandchildren, yeah, something like that. And um, we were just talking, and um, she said something to one of our translators, and I found out later that what she was saying was that she was offering her food that she, well, that one of her daughters were making, and it turned out to be spaghetti. And she said that she wanted to give us the food even if um, we only got one strand each. And it hit me so hard because I'm not like that. <laughs> I'm not willing to give up my food, especially spaghetti, because I love spaghetti. And I'm not willing to give up everything, even if I go without anything. I mean, they do the same with seating. Like, we took up all their seats in the room, because they don't have much couches or anything. And um, all her family were standing on the side when we talked to them. And so it was very powerful to see people who have basically nothing give up whatever they have just for us. And so... Um, and this was your first international mission trip, right? Yeah, this was yeah. my first. Now, Andrew, what did you see there that... Just one example, something you saw there. Well... Yeah. Leave it on. You just gotta leave it on. Okay. Uh, probably one of the main things I saw when I went to the DR was probably the amount of... Probably, I'm gonna have to go to the kids. The kids, when we went there, were phenomenal like you see them and you always think of American kids as kids who want toys and stuff like that and all they wanted really was water and that kind of like hit me because it's kind of like wow you think about it and it's like when I was a kid I always wanted something a toy I never thought about hey water running and yeah, they don't ask for much it's funny because what they want most really when you're there is just a relationship with you. They want to play. They want to talk to you. They want to hear from you. They want to just play. And so it's pretty amazing. All right, Christiane, what did you see there? Well, Your first uh, Dominican, or first international. Uh, international trip too, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I was really blessed because I was able to go with my eldest son. So watching him grow mm -hmm. and with the kids was, was very powerful for me. But um, to see the way that the society has nothing. And a lot of them where we went were not believers, but they were willing to give everything that they had. You know, and it just really made me think a lot of times, you know, like, oh, our cars will break down, our washer and dryer will stop, and we're like, oh, gotta get that fixed now. These people don't even have power in their homes. They don't have to be concerned about that. They don't own cars. They just have such a simple life and they were so willing to love and to serve those of us that they didn't know um, you know by giving up the seats in their home by offering what little bit they did have um, and even you know by making sure that we had water that we could drink and that we stayed hydrated and that we were you know getting to come up and work next to the Dominicans and helping to build uh, build their add-on building, you know, making sure that, you know, they kind of 
slowed down so that we had the ability to come in and help them because they would have had it done already by the time we were there mm -hmm. but to allow us to come in and be a part of what they're doing mm -hmm. and you see all these unfinished homes because they don't take loans for homes when they get enough brick to move to the next step then they add more to their home and then they don't touch it again until they get more supplies to add on to it so what's interesting is when we go there's always something that we return with um, a little bit different and that we want to implement in our lives or something we learn. Um, maybe it's ministry, maybe it's just an interaction, maybe it's simplicity, whatever it is. But how can we be praying for you as you've brought whatever that is back and now we're kind of implementing some of that in your life? How can we partner and pray with you in that? Well, simplicity, of course, is definitely one thing. Um, that stuff is just stuff and we didn't have it when we were there so it was so refreshing to spend that time fellowshipping with each other and uh, you don't need to have electronics up in your face you know we played cards we sang songs we developed relationships the Lord really selected the group that went and it, it, we really were able to bond mm -hmm. a lot while we were there um, so as we, we move forward, praying that we can keep that simplicity and remembering how it was. Um, but also praying for Doug and Revision and... Who's here today with us? Um, I can't miss him. He's the little guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and what we can do moving forward, you know, that the Lord will show us when and if he wants us to go again, that he will provide the opportunity for us to do that as a family um, and as a church completely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how can we pray for you? For, you? for me, it's... you brought these things back, and yeah. now you're implementing. I mean, I, I remember learning, we've done so much as a church um, based on what we learned there, right? Like, we went there, and we saw the things, we experienced what they're doing, and we listened to the pastors and church leaders, and we brought those things back. We said, you know, we can, we can do that here. Mm -hmm. So for you, what would you bring back, and how can we pray for you? For me, it's to keep the mentality of the end goal, because I get so overwhelmed with, like my job and school, even though I just graduated, but um, just the little things in life and like what I'm dealing with right now. And for just pray with me to help me remember that this is all about ending up in heaven with God. Like that's the end goal. And so no matter the worries of this life, God's got me, God's got everybody. And that even if, you know, life goes horribly, I'm going to end up in heaven one day with him and praising him. So just to keep that mentality. Awesome. So this is three of our nine that went on this. This was the church's 10th trip. And these are three, um, all their first times. Lauren, it was her first time too. And you saw probably some video testimony of her on Facebook. She can't be in town today, but um, several others that went. It wasn't their first time. So we had about half and half. And so we're continuing to see God work in this partnership with the local churches there in the, in the Dominican through uh, our friends at Revision. So we're constantly praying. The next trip is already on paper. It is, uh, you'll see it sent out to you, but it's going to be January and February, a men's trip in January and a women's trip uh, in February. And so uh, be praying through and saving your pesos and, and be ready uh, for the Dominican trip. It's a trip that you don't um, you don't want to miss. God's at work there and it's been a true joy and I think a lot of what's happening here is because of our relationship with them there and um, you know just our obedience to, to go and be a part of lives of Dominican. They're some of the most incredible people. Uh, the church passionately loves the Lord and the church passionately loves their neighbors who are lost. And there are so many lost people in the Dominican. So thank you guys for sharing. We've got a couple of our teenagers and one of our teenage or one of our youth workers that's going to come and share their experience in the Dominican. So if you guys want to come. Kelvin said you can all come but you have to behave and not be distracting. <laughs> So I don't know if you want to do that. Here comes Kelvin. I know JW was one that was going to share. Cameron was one. Oh, there you go, Olivia. All right. I don't remember. Did I give you guys questions, or were you just free reigning it here? I think we're free reigning it. This ought to go well. All right, Olivia, jump in. Okay. <laughs> oh, hold on. I'm seeing your number. 
Thanks. So many of you as a church had begun to pray for these guys, and we brought them up on Sunday before they left, and we prayed over them. But it's, it's not just that. You had been praying for them each week. Uh, I think it's Thursday in our prayer journals that we are uh, praying for our student ministry, for our teenagers. And, and listen to me, God really answers our prayer. And I don't want you to miss this connection, the fact that we as a church have been praying. You and I as individuals have been praying. Some of our teenagers actually, I learned, have been praying for God to really do a work. And he was faithful to answer our prayer. And I shared with these guys earlier, I think it had already been uh, shared with the same thing there, but every single revival that's taken place throughout history has started with the young people. And so, share with us. Okay, so to say that this was the best week of my life might seem like an overstatement, but it's not. Um, I had been praying for a really long time for our youth group to go close, grow closer. We were in kind of a dry spot. I think we all agreed on that this week. Um, when I, I, we got there and I was already like kind of tired. I didn't exactly want to be there. Um, then, you know, it's mission feud, so you go out and you do things. And we, one day, certain day, we went and we worked at this community garden. And while we were there, it was hot outside. We were out there for about almost three hours, I think. Every, you know, my dad said one time he looked up and everybody was working at this garden. And there wasn't one complaint. Um, so that was our turning point, I think. You know, we were all like, okay, you know, we got to wake up here. Uh, that night and the night after, we all got really, we had a group discussion and we got really vulnerable and we shared our struggles and we prayed over each other for a long time, a really long time, just back to back prayers. Um, we encouraged each other and we supported each other with what God was calling us to do. And I never felt like our youth group had been ever, like, that was the closest I felt like our youth group had ever been before. And it was awesome. Um, we all, I didn't want, I don't know if everybody agrees with this, but I didn't want the nights to end where we had those long talks where we just kept going. Um, we grew closer, as I said, um, and I realized that when I had been like praying for God to help our youth group go closer, he answered with yes. And that happened while we were there. And I found this verse that I actually, I got back and last night before I went to bed, I was doing my devotion. And you know, God was like, hey, you know, here's this verse. And so it says, is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders to the church and pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And that is James 5, 13 through 16. Thank you. This is Cameron. Cameron, this is my nephew, Cameron. Uh, Cameron never talks. It's really funny. But I heard news that Cameron talked a lot. So I don't know what's up with that. I'm interested to learn about that. So Cameron, share with us. I like to think before I speak. and um, He is a thinker. People often confuse that for just either not paying attention or zoning out. Those are the same thing. But Last night I was working on this and trying to see what God wanted me to say up here. And I wrote down some notes. And then I come here and I see that like JW's got his piece of paper fully typed out. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia's got her verse and all that. I'm, yeah, I'm not prepared. I've got like, yes, you are. I've got three bullet points on an index card. Well, it's good because you got 30 seconds. All right. Okay. So, as has been said by Olivia, um, God did a good work in our youth group through all of us for all of us. Um, he, well, personally, I had an idea in my head for a long time that it was, it was a really a barrier between me and God and other people. And God took that and he showed me just how wrong I was. Um, but in a good way, because he's God. <laughs> um, he showed me how broken I was. And that, that was the idea is that I thought I was a lot better than I am. I'm not. I always thought of myself as a good Christian boy. I'm not. I'm. When it, whenever I talk about this, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, Paul refers to himself as chief of sinners. 
I am chief of sinners. Not in the sense that I rule over them, but my sins are great. Um, but yeah, he showed me a lot of things um, that I'm not quite doing the way he wants me to do. And he showed me things that he's shown us a lot. It's really just showing and we've all gotten a lot closer through that church group prayer time. And it was amazing to see it just, there was no, there was no like telling anybody to do something. Somebody raised their hand and said, God put this on my heart to share this to you. Everybody, all of the youth just gathered around her and just started praying. We did a group prayer and that, that was just amazing. I've never seen anything like that before. And well, I pray that we see that again. Yes. Pray it spreads not just in the youth, not just in this youth group and in other youth groups, but throughout the entire body of the church. God really showed us what it means to be the body this week. Amen. That's really all I got Thank to say. I've always, you know, Cameron has always grown up in a Christian home and had a dad that spent a lot of time and a mom that prayed for him, spent time with him and taught him the things of the Lord. And, and you could tell that, you know, he had a whole lot of it in his brain, right? Like he could look, he knew theology, his, you know, his dad works for Lifeway in the children's curriculum area and just all that built up. But, you know, you would be able to see him kind of look at a song and think, well, how can we sing that song? It's not theologically, literally correct. And so many things would distract him from worship. And you can tell that God just ripped some of those things that, that maybe aren't, maybe they're open-handed things and just allowed him some freedom, it seems, to, to worship and to be a part of that. So, Because I can see Cameron singing up there, and I'm sure not every one of those words were probably meeting your standards, were they? <laughs> Didn't even notice. All right, <laughs> moving on. He's family. I can embarrass him. I usually go with my wife and daughter. All right, Jake Dub. Uh. Oh, yeah, I'm already going to cry. So this week, it's been truly eye-opening for me. This, this week's theme was restoration. And I came to camp with a brokenness that needed to be restored. And he, God, he brought me down to a point where I just snapped. Where I just snapped after starting to, after starting to dive into in the sermons of Paul's letter to Colossae. And a man that was so broken, he persecuted the Christians... And he found faith. He found his brokenness. And he found salvation through Jesus. And he said amazing things. And he wrote amazing things like he did here in Colossians. It says in Colossians 3, Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is in your life appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. So put to death what is earthly. And after this, I realized I can't escape this sin, this sin. I can't escape it on my own. I need to give it to God. So there at the altar, I bowed down. And I said, God, take it. You can have it. I don't want it anymore. I put it on the one who could carry my burden, who could restore me. And I surrendered to him that night. And let me tell you, surrender has never felt better. And I thought I did not go to God at first because I thought my sin was too great, that he wouldn't love me anymore. My sin was too great, it was too big for him to handle. That's not true, it's not true. Let me tell you, he brings you down to the bottomless pit, which is your life, so that you turn to him and say, take my brokenness and heal it, and heal it. And give it to God because he loves you and he cares for you with a special never ending love. And he wants a friendship with you. And, he, and when you ask for forgiveness, he will welcome you with open arms. Time and time again, and will not hold it against you. He will wipe the slate clean. And that's what I learned this week. And this week I've gone, sorry for I'm <laughs> And it says, that, and this week I've gone closer to God. I've gone closer to our youth group. Because Youth United, we stand a youth. A united youth is a strong and holy one, one desirable by God. Thank you, Jane, for that. <laughs> and I thank the one above for every single student in the youth group that was placed in my life for a purpose. I am blessed by him, truly. Amen. And I thank you. Thank you, dear Doug. So, first of all, who would like to have some boldness like these three kids just showed? Amen. 
to be able to stand here boldly proclaim. It was, it's just been amazing. The things that they've not shared with you is Friday night when we had that just, we're going to bear our souls time. It, it, it was completely spirit-led. It was completely spontaneous. Nothing that happened that night was instigated, was prompted by any of the adults. I'm over in one corner, Charity's next to me, Josh and Jeremy over here, Brian and Gina are on the other side, and we're just sitting back and we're, we're enjoying seeing what's happening in these young people's lives. It's amazing to me that two days prior, you know, I don't remember if it was to, for lunch or what it was, we're like, hey, is him, who wants to pray for whatever it was? We went from that to all of a sudden gathering around people, laying hands on them, not just one person praying, but as soon as that person finished, the next person started. As soon as that one did, the next one, and then the next one, and then the next one. There was such boldness. There was such power through Jesus Christ. The one thing I want you to remember, and I know as an adult it is really easy to do because we get so busy in what we do, our little area of ministry, our connect group, we come into worship, but I want you to know, and I want you, I want you to hear this, and I pray that we recognize that these people, these young adults, they are part of this church. Amen. They are not just the teenagers. They are not just the youth. They're just not something that we do on Wednesday nights so we have youth service or we do VBS or we go to camp once a year. They are part of our body. They showed us, the adults, they showed us truly what it meant to be the body of Christ the other night. When somebody shared and went, and trust me, when, when they started opening up and sharing, it was more than just, hey, you know, I'm, I'm kind of messed up a little bit. No, it was, these are my deepest, darkest secrets. This is truly what I'm struggling with. There was no inhibition. There was no secrecy. It was, this is who I am. And instead of judgment, instead of condemnation, all they received from each other was love and prayer. And that's who I pray we become. Amen. Amen. Awesome. I think Jeremy's coming to collect our tithes and our offerings and make a few announcements. Am I right? Am I doing the right thing? Okay. Yeah, you are. Make sure didn't. And so I didn't tell Kevin when I was doing this. If you guys saw, I, I want to just, this doesn't capture, but just you saw a couple of pictures flash on the screen while Kevin was talking. We just want to give you a little glimpse in the room of what we saw. And you could see from different angles. I was standing pretty much in the same spot, and you would see them move from one one corner, and then they'd go to this corner, and then they'd go to this corner. It was, it was, absolutely incredible to see them surround each other. You saw a little bit this morning. Those of you who were up front, you could see them come around here. And so we just wanted to share a couple of pictures with you. All right. Well, we wanted to give you just one more little peek into what uh, some of this incredible worship uh, that happened this week. And I thought Kevin was going to mention it because he's our worship guy. Now, if you follow some of us on Instagram and, the, and Facebook, you might have seen the pictures. We saw our kids, what you saw up here, the raising the hands, hype worship. We saw some of that. And then we went to a nursing home, and we were gathered. I didn't get this picture up there. We gathered around a hymnal and a cappella sang old hymns in a nursing home. And these kids have seen the, the, the vastness of what worship looks like in the church, and so we're excited. But we want to go out today, as we go out, we want to sing uh, a chorus uh, that we sang this week. And, and the whole thing, you heard it, been restored. And the, and the chorus is, Jesus saves, change will break. And so we want, these kids want to sing that with you, or for you, really, because uh, let's face it, you guys probably don't know it. But if you catch on, feel free to sing along with us. Uh, go ahead and hit that, Miss Kaylee. Here we go. Jesus saves.
Heavenly Father, thank you for working in this youth group. We love you so much. We're so thankful for what we saw today from baptism and communion and the, the fellowship of this body. Thank you for your love and grace in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.